Sarah, and I'm really into Highland dancing. Last year, I was lucky enough to be part of the New Zealand team of Highland dancers that went to Scotland. It was totally awesome. There were loads of dancers from heaps of different countries. I qualified for the final in my age group, which means I'm in the top 20 dancers in the world. We have to wear quite a bit of makeup when we're dancing. I guess I was destined to be a Highland dancer. I have three great grandfathers that immigrated from Scotland and so Scottish blood runs through me. My grandma and her sister used to dance and my grandma was also a teacher. And when I was younger, I'd go to her house and she'd put on bagpipe music and I'd dance to it. And I've been dancing for 13 years ever since. We need lots of costumes for Highland dancing and we keep them all in this wardrobe. This is my kilt here. My mum made it, so it's pretty special. The tartan is lilac Lennox and I really love the colour. We get our jackets made by a lady called Paula Bamford from New Plymouth. It's really cool because she customises them for us. We wear a special lace front underneath our jacket. This is mine and my grandma had made the lace for me. We also need special shoes and these are called ghillies. In here is the practice room. It used to be our game room but I took it over and now it's the dancing room. We've got a dancing floor, the bar and the mirror and then in the corner is all the trophies. I've collected quite a few trophies over the years. I've got some from exams, some from national and from international competitions. I use the practice room for about an hour every day, so we're pretty full on. In every practice, I do stretching, strengthening, fitness and technique work. Most Highland dancers are based on stories or legends. The four main dances I do are the Highland Fling, the Sword Dance, the Sean Chews and the Reel. The Highland Fling is a dance that represents a stag. The arms are raised like the stag's antlers. The sword dance, originally known as the Gilly Callum, comes from a story in the year 1050. King Malcolm defeated his enemy whilst in battle. He placed his sword over his enemy's sword and then danced around them in victory. The next dance is the Chantreuse. It is based on the time when the English forced the Scots to wear trousers instead of their kilts. The dance depicts the Scots shaking off their hated trousers and at the end rejoicing when they get their kilts back. And finally, the reel, which is normally danced with four people. It's said to have started when people were waiting outside church on a cold morning. They danced to keep themselves warm. I also enjoy showing others what I've learned, so this is where I teach dance classes. Six point, ready, go! One, two, high cut. One, two, three, four. Good, good. now step close. And bow. My ultimate goal would be to win the world championships in my age group. My goal for this year is to get into the finals and win a medal. Wish me luck, guys. <laughs>